Hey folks, Mike here again. Thanks for tuning in. So today we talk about one of the most important things to get your balance right. Um, I get this question quite often, uh, sometimes asking how to make sure you have your snare, your kicks, um, especially the drums, right in the mix and people struggle with that, especially when it comes to mixing drums with guitars and all that stuff. Today I show you one thing that I've learned over the past, which has nothing to do with equalization, compression or any fancy mixing technique. So don't be scared to watch the episode and without further ado, let's jump in. So for this topic, I'm going to load in a song that I'm about to mix just from scratch. So you really start uh, see how I start with uh, here. So let me just drag in all those files. Um, the song is called Tiptoe Through the Crypto from a band called Turquoise based in New York and a fantastic band. Um, the recording is from the um, Telefunken Live from the Lab series, which you found online and where you have access to the uh, multi-track recording so you can mix them on your own. And probably I'm going to use this track um, for further mixing sections or mixing tutorials. So you see uh, it's still processing. Let me just, before I touch any faders, so this is the pure track here. Um, probably some tracks are too low, but they seem to be decently recorded. So let me just bring them down just a bit to avoid clipping. So before I start, uh, we're going to listen to this song maybe a minute or so. So we get an idea about the song. I never, I, I heard the song, but I don't mixed it or haven't mixed it so far. You see all the fa faders, I changed nothing, no color coding, no templates, no mixing, routing, just like the pure performance here. So let's have a listen to the track within the first minute or so, and then I'm gonna um, walk you through um, through the, the process that I've talked about in the beginning. So here's the song. Amazing song, amazing band. You really sh should check them out. Um, the I mean, I'm a drummer, as you know. The drummer of this band, he's simply a monster. He's just amazing. So you see, it's um, it has a certain life feeling to it. Uh, they all performed this um, in the room live together. Um, so no isolated vocal booth or drum room. So it has this nice vibey, livey character. However, um, we need to find the balance because obviously it's not in the right balance. It sounds like a pure recording, decently recorded, but a pure recording. So before I start, let me quickly organize and I will forward the video, uh, the tracks so that the drums are together and the vocals are together. I have my own system here, which you will see in a second, but uh, let me start with this first. So my template usually looks like, um, usually I use colors, but I start with the vocals. Um, I think in 90 out of 100 tutorials you see online, they all start with the, with the drums on the left. I start with the vocals, so deal with that. Um, so the vocals are left, uh, then we have, uh, usually I have the bass, um, any guitars, then we have this horns section here, uh, keyboards, and then the drums starting with the kick, snare, heads. We have one rack tom and one floor tom, a pair of overheads. The room and the chamber are interesting because those are room and chamber microphones in this song, which captured um, every single band member. So it's not like, just like a, a drum room recording, however. So what I do is I bring down all the faders um, because I really wanted to start from scratch. And we talked about having the vocals sitting in the mix um, um, and the drums sitting in the mix. So usually you have four or three elements that sit right in the middle that are the backbone of your of your song, which is the kick, the snare, the bass guitar, and the lead vocals. So those four elements usually sits dead center. Um, when you get them right, 
80 percent of the of the song is already mixed the rest you can put left right and there's one hard rule that you need to i mean there usually there are no hard rules in audio uh, processing or production but one thing you can remember mixing isn't that complicated at the end because mixing is all about volume control so repeat after me mixing is volume control of course um, like those fancy effects like reverb and delay they add a sparkle to the and make uh, to the to the song and they make it more exciting but in the end equalization compression they all dealing with volume and that's the most important thing. And I learned this technique, not technique, but this approach from the famous Al Schmidt, probably the most well-known and best recording engineer in music history. Uh, he's working in music for 70 years. And when he started, there was no equalizer. So he once told that if he, wants, he wanted a brighter sound, uh, he had to change the microphone. Or if he wanted to do have something louder or quieter, he just moved the microphone. And this is the idea behind it, that you start with the foundation um, and don't step into the trap that you use equalization or compression to make the snare be louder right from the start. There is a certain need that you use some um, techniques um, during the mix process where you need maybe pro uh, co compression, equalization or saturation, whatever, to make something jump out even more. But the mistake that I've done in the past and what I still see uh, online with other folks and I listen to some mixes is that the overall balance wasn't right from the beginning. So. The first fader I bring up is the overhead channel. Um, the overheads are the best capture of the whole drum set. Um, room microphones sometimes can be too far away, too washy. So overheads are usually good in capturing what the drums are all about. So let's, have, let's listen to the overheads and what I'll do then afterwards, I bring in the other elements of the, of the drums. So I just start with the balance of the drums here. And by the way, don't care about uh, volume, like overall volume of the particular tr uh, tracks right now. Don't just make sure that they're not clipping. Uh, so right now they are peaking at minus 10. Um, I think the the um, overall level of this of this track is still uh, or even quieter. You can talk with that afterwards, but just like finding a balance between them. What I already do, um, I've pa I'm, I'm panning the stuff, so um, I'm just checking the overheads, and in the overheads, um, the it's it's mixed or recorded from the audience perspective, which means the uh, the hi hats um, coming from the right side. So I will pan the um, the, the the single mic on the hi hats to the right as well. So let me listen to the Tom solo here, this little section. Let me loop this section here. So when the hi-hat is on the right side, of course, the, um, the first Tom, so the Tom Tom uh, is usually on the right side or slightly on the right or just like right above the, the snare and the floor tone is then uh, of course to the left side. The balance here of the drums, um, you can determine when you 
have the overheads as the loudest parts, um, the drums seem to be more in the background. Um, and if you bring in the individual microphones like kick and snare, you can emphasize them. Um, back in the days, like in the 50s, 60s, when professional recording really evolved due to um, uh, the possibilities the technology gave the engineers like multi-track recordings and like recording two tracks, four tracks, eight tracks, 16 tracks, so on and so forth. Um, this usually started with one microphone and drums, then they had like two microphones and four. And the direct microphones on the kick and the snare, for instance, or the toms were just like to support the room microphones or the overheads. Um, they, from the direct microphones, you get all the attack and the crack. And sometimes it's needed, uh, especially in rock, hard rock, um, in a dense metal mix. But sometimes in a more funky laid back feeling, um, you just bring them slightly in to support the overheads. And this is what I try to achieve here. Mixing drums on their own doesn't make any sense because no one will listen to the drums on their own. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring in the bass uh, because the uh, relationship between the bass and the kick drum, um, especially in the drums in general, is important. So let's bring up the bass here. And usually in that stage, um, it wasn't in incidentally uh, um, hitting the solo button. I don't solo this stuff here because I'm not mixing. I just, it's all about the overall um, uh, balance of the track. So let's jump to a more busy section here. The key here is really that um, with the drums, when you start with the drums, they set the reference point even when it comes to volume. Um, this is important. When you feel that one instrument is maybe covering the drums in the first place, just bring them down and not try to immediately grab a compressor to put things down. You will need st all that stuff in the way, but um, it's really when you know already that, for instance, a guitar should be quieter than the snare drum, then just start with it quieter and not use any processing to make it quieter. So now let's bring in Sammy, the lead vocalist. Um, so she's starting to sing here. So let's bring her in. I see this life flash before. Now I'm going to bring in the room because now I've introduced the rest of the band. So those room and ambient uh, channels here. So let's do uh, see what they uh, contribute to the song. So let's bring in the other guys who are singing. Uh, so Dave and Geneva. You got a tip to do the crypto. Said your mind don't know for little. Now when you're locked up like the lips, oh, he won't tip to do the crypto. I think.
think I'm going to slightly pan them, let's say 15% left, 15% right, because I know from the video, which I've already seen, that they stand left and right to Sami, who is doing the lead vocals. So I just want to give that impression when you watch the video and then my final mix maybe one day. Um, so the, the, the stereo perspective is the same here. So again. You got a tip, do the crypto. Should your mind down, down, believe dog. So this track seems to be empty. It says Josh Vox, but obviously Josh decided not to sing, so we can delete that track. You got a tip, no, do the crypto. Set your mind down, down, believe dog. Now when you're locked up, back the lips, so. And now bring in the other elements and pan them left, right um, to fill the song. So let's start with uh, Dave's guitar. Dave is singing. And I pan David, uh, Dave, fifteen percent to the left, so the guitar shouldn't be um, like crazily somewhere else. So the horns section here, um, uh, as I know, they usually stand together. So just like bring them together to one side. So let's say 40, because they are not standing all in the same place. So a little bit different, 40, 45 and 50. So let's see how this sounds here. You got a tip, no, do the And now during the way, you can slightly, a little bit adjust here and there a track. So all the keys, I'm gonna pan to the left because the horn section is on the right. So just like to create some contrast, like put it like 50% to the right and maybe adjust them. Just like listen how that sounds. I mean, Sami obviously has a lot of dynamic range, so of course there is compression needed, but um, I, th I think I'm done. Sun is down upon my soul. I think I don't need this trick either, so let's do that. Sun is down upon my shoulder.
One thing um, as a tip, if you um, finally, before I start like really doing the mix and checking the balance is like um, bring down the overall volume of the track. Sometimes it's really important to hear it a little bit louder and then really soft and even switch the whole song to mono because in mono, when some suddenly some instruments disappear completely, uh, you need to change the, uh, the volume and the panning. So let's do this. First um, playing with the volume and then with the mono. That's another trick I learned. Uh, put like the volume really low so that you can easily speak over it. Like when someone's sitting next to you, put the whole song in mono, um, listening low in mono. When you still hear every single uh, element of the mix in a good uh, relationship, you know you are done. So finally, as a final conclusion uh, or a final um, comparison, what I want to show you, because like over time you get used to the sound. So let me just quickly bounce this, um, the volume we've come so far, and then we're going to compare it with the starting point. And you easily hear that this sounds already kind of like a mix, which you can show to someone else. Uh, and you see, I've touched nothing on the processing so far. So let me just quickly bounce this here to a two track, uh, which is rather fast to so render tracks to stereo. So now I have two mixes here, the raw and the balanced one, and I can now play the song and switch easily between the both of them. So we first start with the raw and then we're gonna switch to the um, balanced mix here. <laughs> So you see folks, uh, you really should concentrate on the balancing before you even touch any single plugin. Um, I learned this and it really helped me along to really get and achieve good balanced mix, which is crucial, um, especially when you want to do something that's really sound natural and well balanced, because that's the key for any good mix at all. Let me know in the comment section below what you do to achieve a good balance mix. Um, is there a mixing technique, a plugin that you use, uh, or you just send it out to someone else who can do it better than you? Leave a comment below. I highly appreciate every comment. Consider to subscribe, of course, and thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.